Hey, what's up? So, so since adding the fence to my Halloween decor, it's really up to my Halloween game. Uh, and over the years, I've added a little bit more here and there. The pumpkins for the light show. These really killer archways to bring them in one way and have them go out another way for an entrance and an exit. And I've also put together these pillars. And these pillars really gave it a really sweet finishing touch. I'm going to show you what I did right now. Let's do it. <laughs> You're going to want to start off with sheets of insulation foam boards. Lowe's and Home Depot have a variety to choose from depending on how thick you want them. You'll have to decide if you want to build 4 foot pillars, 5 foot pillars, 6 foot, foot 7 foot, 8 foot bunch. The foam boards come in 4x8 sheets, so the height you choose to make your pillars will change the pattern that you will need to use. If you build four four-foot high pillars, you should be able to use three foam boards to complete the project. I built a five-foot high fence to go around the yard, so I needed to build five-foot high pillars to match. I was only able to build one pillar per sheet, so I had a little left over, but my daughter and I enjoyed making custom headstones out of the leftover foam. I'll post a link to another video on standing these headstones up. An extremely useful tool for cutting foam is a hot knife or a hot wire. If you don't have either of those, which most people do not, um, I got this little wood burning kit for $14 or $15 uh, years and years and years ago. It comes with changeable tips, so you can do all sorts of different things. You can burn patterns into wood, leather, or melt styrofoam like butter using a hot knife. After you get all the pieces cut, it's time to start putting them together. I used both screws and glue to hold this together. I glued them end to side like this. For the two one foot by one foot pieces that goes on the top and bottom of the pillar, you're going to want to decide which is the top and which is the bottom. Because the bottom piece, you're going to want to cut a hole in the center of now you're going to want to glue and probably spray foam and whatever you can a pipe inside of the pillar so that you have something to slide down over the rebar. You'll now be able to see what the pillars are going to look like when they're done but do not attach the top and bottom yet because we're not quite to that point. The next step is putty. This is just wall putty. We're going to use it to fill in all the cracks, all the screw holes, and we're actually going to go a little wild with it because this gives the rocks that we're going to form out of the pillars its texture and its depth. You need to let the putty completely dry overnight. Some of it will flake off, but that's okay because it just adds to the customization. Do not sand the putty. There's no point because we want it rough like a rock surface. Okay, so now we've reached the point where we need to decide what we want the pillar to actually look like. Um, I chose the stacked boulder look because I really kind of like that. But you can look online and there's tons of different patterns to choose from. I mean, pillars, it's pretty infinite. So what I did with mine is I took a marker and just started drawing the designs. Now when you do the rocks or the bricks or whatever, don't just do them all on this side and then all on this side. Do some that actually go around the corner. I don't want them perfectly round because rocks are not necessarily perfectly round. So I've got them, they're going around the corner. There's some, I mean, there will be some that might end right at the corner. Maybe make a, a smaller one up in here. Another one that goes around the corner here. 
one that starts right at the corner, comes here, one that starts at the corner. You'll get it. You can look them up online. Like I said, there's tons to choose from. And now we're going to come back to our hot knife where we've got a ton of options. I'm going to go with the one that's a little bit thicker. And make sure you screw this in before you turn it on because that gets really hot really fast. All right, we're going to give this thing a little test to see if it's warm enough. Oh yeah, it sinks right in. So now you're just gonna go along your design here. You don't have to push hard because styrofoam is just, it's plastic that's been expanded with air. So it just melts just easy like plastic. Go around the corner. See, it just melts. You don't need to go too deep. Now, a lot of these knives come with these sharp tips, so if you want to do a crack in the rock, go right with the sharp tip and just very lightly crack the rock. When you've finished, you'll find a couple spots. You might want to make a little deeper, maybe make the, the crack a little bit bigger, but don't overdo it too much. If you want to take just the, the flat edge of this thing you can really kind of rough up the surface just barely barely touch it make it so your your edges aren't perfectly square, we'll round this off a little bit. And it gives you a bunch of different textures for the different types of rocks that were probably used on this pillar. Attach the top and bottom now using long screws and glue. At this point, just start painting. Different shades of gray, blacks in all the dark cracks, then you can just add on whatever extra. I put moss on these and it looks really, really cool. Sometimes I put plastic light up pumpkins on the top and sometimes there's spooky lanterns hanging off of them. So now, all you need to do is bang a piece of rebar into the ground, slide the pillar over the top. And as a little extra, I used four little steel screw eye hooks on the bottom four sides of the pillar and pound it in with tent stakes. This just helps hold up against all weather elements. So that'll do it for the pillars. Let me know down in the comments, did you make some of these? I'd really like to know. Uh, did you, what kind of pattern did you use? Did you use the brick pattern or the stacked boulders like I did? What kind of extras did you add on? Did you put vines or moss or lanterns? Let me know and check out some of my other videos for some fun builds. Until then, keep it spooky, my crazy friends.